For communication service providers, the journey to cloud native will present a number of challenges impacting corporate cultures as well as technology. But if successfully implemented, the benefits will be substantial. Joining me now is Gabriele Di Piazza, who is Vice President Solutions, Telco Business Unit at VMware. Gabriele, very good to see you again. Nice to see you, Guy. How are you? Very well, thank you. Um, this journey to cloud native for, for telcos, what does it look like? Are we talking an, an evolution or are we talking a revolution? Well, I'd like to say it's a bit of both. Uh, I think it's an evolution from where the market has been in terms of transforming from physical to uh, uh, you know, uh, cloud or NFV and evolving to you know, a more of a cloud native, as you, as you mentioned, right, telco cloud. So it is an evolution which actually uh, presented and uh, implemented many changes, both in technology, in uh, people, processes, operations. Uh, on the other side, I think it's also a revolution because a lot of the uh, achievements that were made in this last three, four, five years in a virtualization world uh, are going to uh, um, you know, further evolve into something which is, uh, I would say, way more complete but also still requires uh, uh, additional you know, technology changes. So uh, for the first time, what I mean by revolution is that I see those uh, uh, network functions being uh, truly re-architected, not just ported over in a different environment, but uh, uh, many uh, of the vendors went back to the drawing board and adopting uh, you know, uh, technologies and uh, principles that um, uh, imply that they had to re-architect them in a true cloud native fashion. So that, that's interesting. The, the, the um, requirement or the recognition that you have to re-architect these network functions rather than just go through some kind of import conversion process why why should we or why do we have to focus a lot on re-architecting well i think this is the nature of uh, cloud nativeness uh, i would say this would have been uh, a much easier transition if the uh, original network function would have been architected in the true cloud for right we uh, for quite some time we discussed transition in terms of you know cloud friendly uh, cloud ready and cloud native now. So I think that uh, evolution happened uh, uh, in different phases, uh, uh, different from uh, you know vendor to vendor. Uh, but if you want to apply the principles of cloud native, you can find different descriptions out there, right? From uh, uh, decomposing those application into microservices, adopting. Uh, you know, principles for uh, CI/CD, continuous integration, continuous deployment, uh, which trace all the way back to, uh, you know, the DevOps type of functions and evolving into a new world of, uh, uh, you know, pass and CAS, container as a service and platform as a service on top. I think this is essential for, uh, um, you know, these principles are essential for uh, deploying and evolving to this new world, which uh, and they imply some re-architecting. Um, and I actually see this happening across the board. What are the three major factors that are going to impact this journey? Uh, I think one key factor is uh, re-architecting your network functions. Uh, this is essential for uh, you know completing the journey here. Um, and the uh, second aspect is the, uh, I would say, the uh, people and processes, how to adapt to a new operating model, uh, new skills, uh, new processes, which uh, will require a continuous deployment uh, in the network. And the third is the readiness of a platform, uh, technology evolution, moving from centralized to distributed uh, with uh, embracing uh, all the characteristics of what's needed for this new uh, platform, low latency, ultra high reliability, uh, you know, critical, uh, critical bandwidth and so forth. And this is people and processes. These are the, the, the two pillars that, that are impacting the cultures of, of telcos that we're hearing a lot about now and the need to, to implement changes and uh, get people and processes in place in order for this journey to continue. Yeah, that's correct. There are other very interesting dynamics happening right now. If you think of the 
uh, uh, movement and investment of the hyperscalers, um, um, uh, so public cloud vendors uh, getting interested in this market, uh, and of course investing both on, uh, uh, I would say, public cloud as well as edge. Uh, I think it's another interesting dynamic uh, because there's, especially in a, in these times, you start to see the uh, um, you know trend in looking at OPEX reduction as well as uh, automation. Are there any other challenges involved? Because any type of network transformation is a difficult and vast process. Um, We've already spoken about some technology and, and cultural um, aspects and factors that are impacting things, but what would you say are the main challenges that CSPs are, are faced with? Uh, I think it's combining a moment of change with the um, desire or need to find new revenue streams. Uh, obviously, 5G is uh, a key thing happening right now. Uh, so the question becomes, how to uh, counterbalance the investment required with the uh, services launched and new uh, or finding new opportunities. So I think this is a challenge top of mind with every care we talk to uh, as we help them transition to a new environment, not only, but also uh, partner, partnering with them in uh, uh, working on new revenue streams, especially on the, on the B2B side, on the enterprise, on the enterprise services side. And CSPs are calling for more collaboration and assistance and help from their partners. So how is VMware going to help them? Yeah, that's correct. I think there's two, uh, two angles here. Uh, on one side, we are collaborating very heavily on uh, technology uh, development, uh, roadmap infusion, so allowing uh, 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 CSPs not just to acquire technology, but to influence and design what the technology and the telco cloud the future would be. Uh, that's more the technology aspect. But then there's a business aspect. We're working with many of them in uh, providing uh, innovative go-to-market services. If you look at the new world of connectivity, uh, with uh, software defined WAN or SD WAN, uh, including security and the advancements and the portfolio VMware uh, put together in uh, security managed security, endpoint security, uh, digital workspace, ability to help carriers launch uh, uh, very uh, uh, you know innovative services for fleet management, enterprise customers, looking at private connectivity, uh, what's booming right now, private LTE private 5G and, and many, many other services. So how to fill that 5G pipe, right? We are um, starting to realize that we are a phenomenal partner given the wide presence VMware has on the, uh, in the enterprise uh, world with over uh, you know, 500,000 enterprise customers around the world. Gabriele, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Thanks to you. Thanks, Guy.